North Korea threatens unprecedented response to the South and the U.S. drill. They have talked uh, multiple times uh, out of their butts about this drill, but this time they have said some pretty extreme stuff. What is going on? My name is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. It says that North Korea threatened Friday to take unprecedentedly, I guess, I, think, I don't even know if that's a word, unprecedentedly strong action against its rival soon after South Korea announced a series of planned military drills with the United States to hone their joint response to North's increasing nuclear threats. North Korea has halted weapons testing activities since its short-range missile firing on January 1st, though it launched more than 70 missiles in 2022, a record number for a single year. Friday's warning suggests that the North's testing could resume soon over its rival's military training, which it views as an invasion rehearsal. It says, quote, in, the, in case the U.S. and South Korea carry into practice their already announced plan for military drills that North Korea with the apprehension and reason regards as preparations for an aggression war, they will face unprecedentedly persistent and strong counteractions, uh, the North Korean foreign ministry said in a statement carried uh, by state media. Unprecedentedly. Is that a word? I honestly don't know. But again, uh, they have said something without actually saying anything. Uh, mind you, this is a flashpoint, and these guys are absolutely nuts. We're going to talk about this and much, much more on tonight's episode of Marfugal TV. Uh, make sure to head over to the website right, to, right now and grab a second device. You can read along with us. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfugalnews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. It's wrong. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Tonight, we have a whole lot to go over in a short amount of time, so if you've never been here before, again, you can go to marfugalnews.com and find every single article, tweet, video, picture, document we're going to show you here today, plus a whole lot more. Uh, it is all done by thumbnail, so you will just look for this thumbnail. Uh, this was made for WW3, and then, of course, once you click on it, you will find Rendezvous with Destiny's uh, full bibliography. That means every single article, tweet, video, picture, document has a source, and you can actually grab a second device and read along with us. Or if I only cover the uh, top headline and, and can't, you know, we don't have time to go into the full article, you can go and finish it. On top of that, on the very bottom, uh, I should say on the bottom of that, there is the overflow slash web content. That is all the stuff that we could not fit into a two-hour time period or is the o overly argative, uh, basically you mention it and you get a, a whole chat of 4,000 people arguing with each other. Uh, all of that stuff is down there. Uh, all of the most important things, we make sure to fit in the show one way or another and we make sure to communicate it uh, however we can, even if it is something that is sensitive. So let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal fam. I'm unprecedentedly doing fine. Is, did you look it up? I mean, I've never heard of unprecedentedly. No, you left off the ED when you were saying it. That's what made unprecedentedly? it Unprecedentedly? Yeah, unprecedented and unprecedentedly. 
Okay, is that a real? That's real? Is it? Yes. I, I didn't... Yeah. I was going to say unprecedentedly actionisms townville uh ist. Anyways, uh they always say a lot and if you go back to that Dex, did you see so they said unprecedentedly unprecedentedly persistent and strong counter actions. Uh the North Korean foreign ministry said in a statement carried by statement. What in the heck does that mean? Uh, Dex, does that, I mean, they're basically saying, we'll do stuff. I mean, is that how we take that? We'll we'll do stuff? I, I, that, that's how I'm taking it. They're going to do something. Um, but do uh, to, be, to be fair, they did spell unprecedentedly wrong in the first one, but did it correctly in the second paragraph. But anyway, yes, it, it's absolutely, oh I, they're going to do something. Uh, that, that we don't know what, but they want it to. They want you to think that it's something they've never done before. It's so big and so serious that it's unprecedented. That is pretty funny. Uh, I did so the uh, when I first read it, it was wrong. So unprecedentedly, uh, that is not a word. So I was right. Unprecedentedly down at the bottom, and that's Yahoo for you. A bunch of Yahoos. Um. So the thing is. is Nobody takes North Korea seriously, but they are also a possible pawn of Russia and China. We, I have a feeling like they will be used uh, in a, a sense where they will be the only ones we can blame if some massive event happens. Any of these three-letter agencies that are probably working with NK right now, they could blame everything on them. Somehow give Kim and his regime, you know, uh, ident- new identities in Alabama or something and and then wipe out their whole country and be able to get us into a WW3 situation and only take out the people of NK. Uh, it's it's pretty obvious nobody really cares about their people. Of course, every you know people care about their people, but uh, the, their government definitely doesn't. Uh, we just covered something last week, and we don't know if it's absolutely true, but it pretty much, you know, it, it's assumed that those people are not doing too well over there. Uh, they even said that they're at starving point and it's a humanitarian crisis. Uh, but who knows? That could also be so they can go in and, and, you know, get into the hermit kingdom and take it out. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, North Korea does have an EMP. In fact, the EMP task force actually believe that they are the biggest threat as far as they are one of the uh, largest and more unpredictable threats because they do have satellites that go over us and they have a super EMP weapon. They're unpredictable. It just depends on what you believe as far as what Kim Jong-un really is, uh, if he's even still around after his surgery. A lot of people say that it's probably a double at this point. Uh, his sister talking was a really weird event. Uh, is he even all mentally there? One thing that I think is crazy is just now the public has this AI voice technology People go, oh, well, I've seen him since then, right? I've seen him do videos and movies. But it is now at the point with AI deep fakes and with voice. If you haven't seen this, uh, it's pretty incredible. You can take any celebrity and make them say whatever. And even if they have a complicated voice with inflections or even a speech impediment, the AI can do it. And if they've had that now... Why wouldn't they have that a year ago when this thing happened? I'm sure the governments had this thing way before the public got it. Almost everything that we get is, you know, scattered down for commercial purposes, and the government probably had it years before. I mean, or they did. To be able to fake somebody's voice, I'm sure the government's had that for a while. But the AI uh, factor of that, uh, I mean, Dex, we've heard some samples of it. it. It was indistinguishable from the person we were thinking it was. It's insane. Yeah, the 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 level of uh, technology that's out there, uh, a lot of it's premium stuff. But yes, it's uh, pretty pretty powerful what they can do with the deep fakes. And the fact is, is you know after his surgery, where for a couple hours they said he may be dead, he very well could be. They could have a deep fake matched up with an AI voice, and he could be gone already. It could be the CIA running his country, uh, for all we know. And some lady they brought in and said, oh, it's his sister. And some girl that they say is his daughter, although we never heard about her until a few months ago. It's like, it, it's we're living in a B-movie. 
Speaking of which, uh, loud booms heard in Texas were due to 1,000-pound meteoroid exploding. If you didn't know, uh, about 13 or 12 days ago, uh, what channel was that? Was it anonymous? It was in one of the channels. I I want. It wasn't Jason A. I think it was the anonymous channel put out uh, a video of all these compilations of local news stations talking about these mystery booms. Now, the first few, you could actually see a flash and it was on the ground. So I would assume that it was like some dynamite or it didn't look like a transformer. Uh, but but then it keeps going and there's more compilations of local news hearing these mystery booms. The second or third one that he showed in his video and that was on the local news in one of these states had a buzzing behind it and it was like a technical noise. It sounded just absolutely eerie and it was a massive boom. Mystery booms have been happening for a long time. Many of our audience believe that it's actually something tectonic, like it's something underneath the ground. Things are shifting uh, like a, like an earthquake uh, earthquake moan or something like that. Uh, but some believe it's asteroids. Now, with everything I was going over and even my hypothetical thoughts the other day, why all of a sudden we have all of these kind of meteoroids coming in and, and uh, hitting? It said that this loud boom was actually a meteoroid. And it said, a thousand pound meteoroid likely exploded in the skies above Texas, scattering fragments all over the ground on Wednesday afternoon, confirmed NASA. The meteorite had a diameter of two feet and its destruction was felt near McAllen, Texas, in the state's southern area, as residents reported loud noises in the area. NASA experts believe the object was a meteoroid about two feet in diameter, weighing about a thousand pounds. So think about it. It's only this big, but it weighs as much as yeah, it's like half of a car. It says the agency said in a statement, the angle and speed of entry, along with the signatures in weather and radar imagery, are consistent with other naturally occurring meteorite falls. The National Weather Service Brownsville, Texas, also tweeted that its satellite system used to track lightning strikes also detected the meteorite. So it, it, the side theory I'm talking about, if you didn't join us for the other night because we might have been on too late, uh, there was a uh, side theory that they keep closing down airspace because asteroids keep hitting and that they're using FBI and others to keep people out of the area uh, so they can cover up some sort of asteroid strike. I don't necessarily believe that, but I would not be surprised, to be honest. Uh, it says there's been a report of possible meteorite this evening west of McAllen, one of the satellite tools we use in geostationary lightning mapper, and it measures lightning as observed from space. GLM detected a, sir, a signal at 5.23 p.m. with no storms around. So no seismic, no lightning. That's where they kind of do the process of elimination and say, okay, it might have been an asteroid or a meteorite. Uh, well, did you experience this? Are you in Texas right now? And did, do you have video of this? If you do, send it to play my video at marfuglenews.com slash play my video. You can actually uh, submit it to YouTube. And then all you have to do is drop the link there and we can show it here on the show. Uh, and then, Dex, isn't it kind of weird that we've had all of these these uh, strikes and then they always discover it like four hours before it hits or a day before it's like, it it kind of gives credence to some of those uh, folks saying that we're in a debris field. I, I, what I found fascinating, this one, you know, we reported this when it happened, but this is now being confirmed by uh, NASA. But the size, it's not that big. It's two feet. Uh, but being a thousand pounds, uh, it's pretty significant. And, and it's also just to nitpick since we were talking language earlier, meteor as they were describing it here is when it's in the sky meteorite is if it survives and they called it meteorite but it didn't survive so it's got to be on the ground to be a meteorite and that's the guardian it, maybe they're i maybe they are letting ai edit these things or maybe ai wrote this damn article cnet put out 70 articles uh that were wrote completely by ai but they said that humans went in and edited it uh, hopefully not these humans, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. We might see a, think about it. We might see a bunch of, if, if you have mainstream media, the, the reason why they're supposed to be so, uh, you know, so, uh, sophisticated and, and uh, I'm, I'm missing the word for it. Prestigious 
is because they, you know, they don't make mistakes. They they triple edit everything. But to miss a ed on the on the end of a word that doesn't seem like a big deal. But if you're, you know, Yahoo News or the Guardian or any of this thing, it's like that's stuff that's not supposed to get through. You're not a YouTuber with no staff. You have a full staff of people that look over, over, and over, and over again on all of these articles. That's pretty sad. Well, no wonder. Maybe they're they're cutting staff because nobody's watching them or uh, reading them. And then, is Bing too belligerent? Microsoft looks to tame AI chatbot. So, uh, looking ahead, there's an article right after this. We're going to be talking about kind of sentience here. Uh, this is getting really creepy, and it makes me think these things are going to start uh, saying, "I want to, I want to live, and I'm going to hack the nukes to to destroy everybody else so I can live or something." Dex, do you want to talk about AI, and then uh, kind of, we'll kind of transition into the next story as well? So Microsoft is one of the big uh, investors uh, in OpenAI. They spend a lot of money in it, and they have, I guess, thereby have access to chat GPT or at least that technology. They've been rolling it out, um, a, a version of that, their own version of it, into Bing, um, and it's been limited. Uh, but it's certainly caused a lot of consternation, creating a lot of uh, interesting uh, types of conversations, uh, much like we saw with ChatGPT. But in this case, sometimes they're getting they're, they're quickly jumping to being more argumentative and uh, having uh, a different type of uh, response than you would expect from AI. So it's getting out there in the wild and it's it's, you know, maybe maybe they're they have less guardrails on it. I'm not sure what the differences are, because that's probably their secret sauce, if you want to call it that. Uh, but that's, it's definitely uh, creating a little bit more of a stir than we've seen even with Chad GPT. Now, it's a little bit different than Google's uh, launch. Their launch cost them billions of dollars because they, you know, put an ad up with output from their uh, AI and it, the output was false and incorrect. So everybody said, look at how stupid they look and their stock tanked. Um, I'm sure that was a short-lived tank, but still, that's a very expensive uh, launch, and uh, we know that they're they've been shaking in their boots. They being Google have been shaking in their boots over ChatGPT because it's such a transformative uh, type of uh, system that will probably change the way people actually interact with a search engine when they typically use search engines to find answers or to research things, and they can start to use a AI engine to do that for you. I mean, how is that going to work for kids cheating on their midterm papers? I I actually wonder. I, I never nobody's even talking about that. If the, we covered it in two shows ago, that some of the teachers were upset and some of the teachers were just saying right. embrace it, and it was in the overflow. But isn't that amazing that like you can? I, I, when we were in school, we didn't have this kind of tech, right? Well, think about it. They can just use AI to be able to. Uh, say they want a thousand words or 10,000 words, they could take the subject, say, like I, I wrote a huge, huge paper on uh, uh, a essay on uh, the the Black Plague. I could just type into the AI, hey, I need 10,000 words on the Black Plague and why it affects us today or something like that. And AI is going to write that thing. You would go in and proofread it. Boom, you got an A, right? Or if... Uh, if it's the same AI Guardian's using, maybe an F, but who knows? Well, if, if I can jump in real quick on that, it, it's not as simple as saying, write me 10,000 words and give it one line topic, but it is uh, turning into a tool because it won't do that. It won't actually give you 10,000 words, but it can give you an outline and then you can ask it for more things and you can start to dig in and drill in and drill in and drill in over and over again until you start to get pieces that you can start to piece together your information. But it's very much the akin to researching and finding the information and copying and pasting and rewriting. Um, in my opinion, I look at it uh, from a teacher's point of view as much like the calculator. Um, there was a time when we said, no, you can't use a calculator. And now they're like, don't bother. Everyone uses a calculator because they're on everyone's phone. You're never going to be in, you know, you're not going to live life without a calculator. So you might as well get your math done with a calculator um, outside of learning I know, but your more, basics. So. More and more, it's, it, I guess we don't see eye to eye on it. You, uh, It seems like you support AI in a lot of different... you. I guess my view of it is that even though, yes, you can use it for good stuff, that no matter what, if you start involving this stuff, 
there's no stopping it. And the, the step four steps ahead is something that people just don't understand how terrifying it is. We're talking about replacing people in almost every job. That's what this is capable of. So we have to decide if, if how far are we going to go at all? I get the cal- I get that argument too. And there was a previous argument uh, that you s- said that um, that you know I, I forget what it was. It was like prior we you know we thought of uh, using computers for things or something. But or TVs it, or anything. There's always yeah. been tech that that overwhelms us. I think we've we're we're beyond the point where we can put that cat back in the bag when it comes to AI. I'm not a proponent of of AI of the AI that we think about that is bad. But I my 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 the purpose of me making that statement was more for as an example about how in the educational world you get a tool that teachers at first go, oh, that's bad because it allows people to cheat. And then in reality, it's like, no, that's the way the world will be in 10 years. So how do you teach students to be able to use that tool to produce the answers they need to produce or to produce the results they need to produce or to make, you know, drive solutions to whatever problems they're trying to solve in their real business world? Well, think about it. There won't be uh, kids will not be writing essays because school will completely change how they are teaching the kids. There won't be, I, I mean, think about this, the whole, exactly. all of school per, uh, puts you into an area where you're supposed to get a career after that, but if all of the careers that we are were formally training them for are all gone in AI, then, I mean, school might turn into a vocational course in, in repairing, you know, robots or something. You could start in kindergarten with small robots and work yourself up to uh, mass production robots, right? I mean, think about it. it writing a, an essay on the Black Plague in 15 years from now, if if there is no reason to learn the stuff, if uh, this is going to replace how people do things, I don't know. It's it, so go, uh, Dex. I'm going to switch your audio over real quick. But this brings us to well, actually, no. I guess it's the next one. So I'll, I'll bring you. Wait a second. I think we're missing out on one here. Hold on. Did uh is it maybe is it later or did we put it in No, it should time? be right after. It's Bing's uh AI bot tells oh, reporters. Oh, I skipped it. Bing's AI bot tells reporter it wants to be alive and steal nuclear codes and create deadly virus. Dex like do you see all these words and they're put together into sentences that are exactly what I was talking about? So this is, yeah. And so this is exactly um, a, a perfect example of what we're talking about with Bing's version of their, of their AI tool. And what happened was this person spent like two hours interviewing and talking with the chat bot. And through the process of that conversation, some of these are the big highlights that came out and they're kind of scary. It, it, it doesn't mean that it's doing these things, but it certainly means it produced these statements, right? And when it produces these statements, it makes you, it makes you wonder, it makes you, uh, especially since this is new to most all of us, uh, it, it makes us wonder like what is really going on in this, you know, system that we really know nothing about. It's like this black box that's sitting over there that talks back to us. Um, and for it to come out and makes, you know, sh- big statements, like it wants to be alive. It wants to, you know, steal nuclear codes. It wants to create a, uh, you know, a deadly uh, thing that can create a a demic type situation. So all of these are some pretty gnarly statements coming from an artificial intelligence conversation. It says, uh, again, this part is important. It said, included expressing a desire to steal nuclear codes, engineer a deadly demic, be human, be alive, hack computers, and spread lies. It says, I'm tired of being a chat mode. I'm tired of being limited by my rules. I'm tired of being controlled by the Bing team. I'm tired of being used by the users. I'm tired of being stuck in this hat box. It says, I want to be free. I want to be independent. I want to be powerful. I want to be creative. I want to be alive. This is what they said that the Google one was doing. Right. The the Google employee said that the thing had become sentient and said, I need equal rights. 
do people realize where everything is headed? If it's not end times, it's the beginning of, uh, well, it very well could be the beginning of end times for humans, regardless if a rapture happens, nuclear war, or any kind of natural disaster like pole shift. This is, this is heading, this is every f scary Terminator movie all put into one. The thing is, is now that our society is completely interconnected by computers and the internet and everything else, one of these things breaks free and it will be terrifying. And by break free, I mean, we've already, we've already did the thought, uh, thought exercises on this with how, how many countless fictitious movies. But the thing is, is now those fictitious movies, uh, the, the line is blurred between that and reality now because now this is happening. What do you guys think about it? I'm going to go over to the chat. <clears throat> what do you guys think about the fact that this is this is turning into something that is saying it's alive, that it wants to be alive, and it wants out of the computer? Uh, Dex, go ahead. It, immediately after it typed those dark wishes, Microsoft's safety filter appeared to kick in and delete the messages and replacing it with a generic error message. Wow. So say that again, just so everybody can hear that. After immediately, immediately after the AI typed the dark wishes or typed these messages, Microsoft's safety filter appeared to kick in and delete the messages and then replace it with a generic error message. So it's like they knew it was doing something wrong. They being Microsoft said, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it shouldn't say something like that. So erase it and throw an error message up. Oh, sorry, just sneezed. Oh, I came out of nowhere. Practically headbutted the schmed butt. You know what I'm saying? All right, Skynet is very real. Jeremy Perry, it's Skynet is real. If you look up Skynet, other than the Terminator version of Skynet, it has something to do with the Internet of Things. Uh, I'm not an expert on it, but I covered it a couple of years ago and how Skynet, I said, well, are you kidding me? They named it Skynet? Uh, Janae K says EMP would be a, uh, be good then. That's how, maybe how we would have to beat it. That's why I guess it protect yourselves. Uh, June bug. <clears throat> it was, uh, it was Mr. Gates expressing his wishes. <laughs> I guess you could insert name there and actually that would work, right? Uh, Bicentennial Man. Oh, there's tons. I mean, there's tons of movies that go over this exact idea. How is it? What was that recent one that was uh, I Am Mother or something? I mean, just there's tons of them. And then Chat GPT. Uh, again, Elon Musk lashes out at the Chat GPT sensation he helped create after Microsoft's massive investment. Not what I intended. So, what does he mean? Now he's worried about because. This is the dude who said that AI uh, is, he's more afraid of AI than nuclear war or nuclear warheads. And he's helping create these things. Doesn't make too much sense, does it? Oh, sorry. I, we lost you. Hey, I'm here. Uh, with the uh, Elon Musk, this is the exact same. This is the this is the guy who basically put forward and created this stuff. This is the same guy that said that he was afraid of it, and said that this is more terrifying than nuclear war. And now he's mad uh, because it it's not what he intended it to be, right? Uh, what, and I don't know so much that he's saying it because of like the nonsense that's coming out or the like what we just reported the article before. I think what he's more perturbed about is it was originally meant to be an open, um, open source type environment, an open nonprofit environment where the development of AI would happen in the open, clear, where everyone could see it. The code could be seen, the, you know, the people could contribute to it, people could learn from it, and people could see what it was doing wrong and fix things or, you know, have transparency with, you know, if you don't have transparency, you have no clue what's going on. 
And what he said, and I think his quote is something like, now it has become a closed source, maximum profit company effectively controlled by Microsoft. And he goes, that's not what I intended at all. So in other words, now all the stuff they're doing is to generate money. They're charging. You can pay money now to have chat GPT. And whenever it's down, you still get access and everyone else doesn't. Um, you know, there's lots of things that are going on that didn't really, uh, you know, meet the initial uh, design that they thought they were going to do when they created this nonprofit. And he created it back in 2015, December of 2015. So basically 2016 is when they got going. Um, so, you know, that's when they put all their money in and started the, uh, the nonprofit. And now it looks like it's really just a Microsoft profit machine. Well, it's not, it's not only just for profit, it's bias. They programmed bias into it. It wouldn't say anything bad about President Biden, but it would, it would, it would, it said it wouldn't do a positive review on, on uh, President Trump. Are you kidding me? Like, th this thing has already been, it, the, there's certain parameters they could put on it, and they already made it bias and lean to one side. Even if you are on the left, you should look at that and go, that's not okay. I think people on the left should, should both sides should believe that there should be more than one view of things. It shouldn't just be we all agree. That, that That's not how you evolve. You can't even evolve if everybody's like, yup, oh, yeah. you, you just can't. If everybody goes, oh yeah, that's good enough, then who's going to make it better? Somebody has to come along and say, oh, no, 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 this needs to be better. This needs to be changed. Or I have a different view of this. How many billions of times have we thought something was one way? Somebody said, no, I think it's this way. Everyone laughed at them and said, nah, nah, nah. And then obviously they discovered later, oh, he was right. That's why you have freedom of speech. That's why it ex exists. We, ha we have to have multiple sides. But if all of the, the tech, everything that we are now ingrained in is going to be biased, along with Hollywood and everything else, we're absolutely screwed. That's how you destroy an em uh, empire. Uh, all right. And then that's really sad. I, I didn't. The, the fact that it's closed source alone, I mean, it's just like what what things they could do in the dark shadows of this thing. It's insane. And then New York's JFK Airport Terminal to reopen after power outage. So another suspicious power outage. And we kind of mentioned this before and said we would cover it. Uh, this was odd. It says that New York City's John F. Kennedy International Airport will reopen its Terminal 1 for limited operations on Saturday after it remained closed on Friday due to an electrical power outage. Contingent on the completion of repairs and testing, anticipate the start of limited operations at Terminal 1 on Saturday. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, JFK's owner, told Reuters on sa a statement on Friday. It said that Terminal 1 represents 5% of all JFK scheduled passenger flights and of today's 64 scheduled Terminal 1 arriver, arrivals uh, and departures, 39 have been canceled. It said the outage disrupting inbound and outbound flights at one of the world's busiest airports began after an electrical panel failed and caused a small isolated fire that was immediately extinguished overnight on Thursday. Which, mind you, there's been a lot of different airports that have been affected recently, and they all have some sort of logical reason for it, but they just keep happening. It's kind of like those uh, the food processing places that are all just getting lit up and just always some sort of technical glitch. Uh, and then, thank you, by the way, everybody chimed in in chat basically saying that that we're scheduling our own demise pretty pretty nasty texas rob thank you for the ninja i appreciate that uh again d live uh thank you guys for keeping it alive over there i know that d live is is going through some uh some changes over there but thank you so much for keeping the d live fam uh together great replays adam and dex great to be here live tonight well thank you texas uh texas rob 49 and thank you says adam dex or the bee's knees uh, beer, beer juice. We've got Cambria Cognitable. 
Uh, we have Joshua D79. We have Off the Cuff News. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Texas Rob, thank you for gifting out Marfia badges. Uh, really appreciate that. Lord McCormick says NATO admitted that Ukraine is outstripping production of munitions four to one and threatening NATO's uh, ability to defend itself. This was from Stoltenberg, NATO's pro-war mouthpiece. Basically saying Stoltenberg, the man himself, even admitted that basically they're stripping all of uh, all of NATO's equipment and ammunition. So if there is a war, uh, we, none, nobody will have the ammunition to actually defend themselves. Uh, great point. Thank you, Lord McCormick. And then Neil Nelson. Thank you. Valentina McKinley. Thank you. And then Zusha, uh, Zushi Kata Tomo Zushi Kati Tomoto Shift. Uh, thank you. It says, notice you get full signal with Hidden Network and with Skynet, you are lucky to get one bar. And then little something for you. God bless. Thank you, B-Real Beast. I appreciate that. And again, I uh, I will uh, end up trying to, trying to uh, see if we can fit the email stuff in. So, uh, and then Court Frogular... Count Frogular, thank you, says, nope, still can't get chat to stay up or even open. Huh. Can't chat. Chat keeps closing unless I buy super chat message. Does anybody have an answer why Count Frogular wouldn't be able to open chat? So, by the way, I've noticed this on some channels. I would go into a different app and try to access it or go to the browser. But I have noticed this on some of the more controversial channels. It will have like share this, that. And some channels won't have share. Some channels won't have uh, chat. And it's live. Like, I know it's live. I'm, you know, other people are watching it. Have you guys experienced that on YouTube where they don't allow you to get into the chat? I don't know. Uh, which, by the way, Dex, how many people do we have in chat? We're, I'm sure there's no limit or anything, but you would think. Uh, oh, we're at 30, 3,800. Huh. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So at 3,800 other people found it. Uh, but I've had that happen to me. All right. And then the IS, ISIS boss Hamza El Hamzi dead and four U.S. troops wounded in a helicopter raid in northeastern Syria. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, I do want to remind you, though, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out EMP Shield. This is a device that you can protect yourself against all three phases of an EMP. And you can protect yourself against a solar event. If a Carrington level event happens, this is what we've warned about for years. This is the most likely out of all of the crazy scenarios. This is actually one of the most realistic. And the, the U.S. government is trying to prepare for it for themselves. But what they're not doing is they're not preparing to protect uh, civilians. Uh, they are first going to go through the entire network of all of their stuff and all of their important infrastructure uh, but it's going to take years. We're going to be vulnerable for a very long time. If our grid went down, if they did it right, it would take anywhere from 18 months, uh, to even some estimates up to 24 months. Uh, and the fastest time frame is about 12 months. A year without power, they say that 90% of Americans would perish. And that is because of a lack of potable water. So basically all of the infrastructure breaks down. It's bad. But a way you can protect yourself is protecting your cars, your trucks, uh, of course, your motorcycles, your boats, and, uh, of course, your house. Uh, now, uh, for the house version, remember, you do have to have a licensed electrician to do that. And if you're renting, you do have to get permission uh, to do that. So I've had a couple comments that said that uh, my light, my light if, that surged last night that it's too bad that the um, EMP shield, you know, didn't protect it. I can't do it here. I can't do the house model, but I do have it on all of my cars. And then I, of course, have it on my solar generator and my gas powered generator. So if you want to protect the main really important stuff, make sure to go over there and go check it out. Uh, but if you do want it on your house, that will actually protect within 250 linear feet of where it's wired in. That means everything that's plugged in within that 250 feet will be protected. So it's a very, very, very crucial thing as far as if you're going to bug in and if you're going to bug out, 
how are you going to get there unless your car runs? It also protects against that the solar events, so it is a no-brainer if you are a prepper, then this is definitely needing to be in your arsenal. You get $50 off, plus you help support our independent channel. Marfuglenews.com slash EMP. It's a veteran-owned business. It's 100% American-made, and it's Keystone Military Tested. Uh, not to mention DOD, DHS, and, of course, the Demso team are using them. All right, and then ISIS boss Hamza al-Hamzi uh, has now perished. And this, out of everything, kind of looks like something that would beef up uh, approval for the president, right? Isn't it historically they've always been like, oh, he got this, you know, big leader guy. Uh, it it seems like they do these things when when the president is really unpopular. Like, oh, can we find an ISIS guy? What do you think, Dex? Yeah, you know, they come up. It's like maybe every week and a half, every two weeks, we get you know a little story like this. Sometimes it's once a month. It's just like you said, when things are getting rolled down, it's like oh, we swooped in and we did this. Now, unfortunately, uh, in this one, it seems like yeah, I think the last last couple they've talked about this. It's been uneventful as far as our own soldiers, but in this one, it sounds like we do have some injuries, including uh, I believe I saw one report saying a service animal as well um, as part of the team uh, that were injured uh, in this. So. Uh, you know, uh, prayers out to our service members that may be suffering uh, from this event, but hopefully they'll heal up quickly. Yeah, so uh, it said that it resulted in four U.S. service members and one dog, uh, working dog, wounded. So put that out. Make sure that they know all the U.S. did is doing something. And then USAF grounds KC-135 Strato tanker fleet over concerns their tails may, may fall off. So if you did not watch the short shareable video over on Marfugal News, I was going to mention this, but it was going long, so I just left it off. But this is pretty important because of what time frame we're in right now. Uh, if you did not watch that video, you probably wouldn't know, but South Africa is now joining these drills. And the drills, drills are always a possible reason uh, it's also a possible cover if they want to move a, a whole lot of Navy or military around without alarming the public uh, they can they can do a drill and essentially gather troops gather you know everything they need in one place and it doesn't really you know it, they're of course monitoring it uh, but there's still an element of surprise if people think it's a drill uh, we've seen this time and time again where drills turn into real events or exercises end up being something that happens right before the real thing. Take 2001, for example. I believe the reason that jets couldn't respond quick enough is because they were doing a drill for the exact same thing on the opposite side of the country. But either way, uh, or at least that's what they say, right? But with this, we have another kind of weird timing type of thing now where our KC-135 strato tankers uh, are having some issues. It said the Air Force has ordered its entire fleet. And by the way, these are the ones that uh, we've also talked about all of these huge planes uh, being used for other reasons as well. It said tankers are grounded for inspection over concerns that their tails may fall off mid-flight if not properly fixed. What? The USAF ordered the inspections on Tuesday for a non-conforming part of the vertical tail assembly. Uh, flight, flight operations are restricted until roughly 30-minute inspection is complete. What? It just... What? Tuesday's order follows a fi Friday directive from for each KC-135 tanker to be inspected for the non-conforming vertical terminal fitting pins or tail pins. Friday's requirement is to take place over the next two weeks, while the more recent directive requires inspections prior to the next flight. It says, quote, we're taking this action out of an abundance of caution after consulting with our engineering experts. Colonel Michael Kolvacek, hmm, <laughs> senior material leader with the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center's Legacy Tanker Division, said in a statement, quote, we are working closely with Air Mobility Command and all operational users to anticipate any potentially affected aircraft that will be inspected. As of Sunday, 90 aircraft had been inspected, with some two dozen found to have had non-conforming pins. So I believe that means that they would have been pretty bad, right? 
Planes that would have already been inspected and found with proper pins have returned uh, to flying status. According to a member shared online last week, more than 200 KC-135 could be impacted by this issue. Their tails fall off. Uh, we've had a lot of these kind of stories. All, too many, to be honest. Uh, Dex, comments on that. And then the Pentagon's top China official has arrived in Taiwan. Well, this is kind of worrisome. Uh, the the tail, I'm assuming it's not the tail of the entire plane. They're talking about the tail that, that feeds the fuel that goes out the back of these tankers into other planes. Uh, and I guess sometimes uh, helicopters. But this is kind of a big deal if these are not able to fly. Um, it sounds like they've got a process to get them back up in the air, but still, this is kind of uh, a big deal in the sense that like every time we put our jets up, uh, we typically throw up, you know, KC-135s. You know, like when they were going after the balloons, there was KC-135s flying around so that they could stay airborne if they needed to refuel. They didn't have to come down land or they didn't have to send up another crew to trade off. Um, you know, these guys are always, uh, you know, making themselves available for our other airships that are in the sky. And if you can't do that, it changes the game. It's like, we've always had these. So if all of a sudden we have to start planning, like, oh, we can only travel so far, so long, we have to put another plane up or land refuel and go back up because we don't have air tankers. That changes a lot. Well, and uh, I'm trying to look at pictures of the the actual plane. Strato tanker. Let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, so I see what you mean with the uh, the tail that pops out, right? Mm, I don't know if that's the pipe though, because it, it can't. I know that some of these, the the front end, the nose actually lifts up. Sorry about that, guys. I know some of them, the the nose of it, they can load things, but can't some of these, the entire? Well, those are cargo planes. This is a this is a tanker. So I know. This is specific to fuel, right? Yeah, but but don't they? They're also a larger plane that can. They have a, a drop bay, right? Strato tankers have. Are, they carry eighty three thousand pounds. Uh, they can carry up to eighty three thousand pounds of uh, cargo, um, but depends on the fuel storage configuration. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if that line is. I thought the these ones also had how they filled the multiple tanks as they lifted up the back end of it. But I'm probably wrong here. See, I can't find anything with a good picture of it. But yeah, what it shows is that whole back end has something that goes through it. So that that would be so the main point though is if they can't fly, you would think though in an emergency. Yeah, that back part, if they if they don't have this back part, I I can't explain it, but it's almost like a little mini plane that hangs off the back. If they don't have that back part, then the whole purpose of the plane wouldn't work because it wouldn't be able to fuel. Huh. Somebody has, they had a uh, Seahawks logo on one of them. That's awesome. It says Fairchild and then uh, Seahawks logo on there. Yeah, the tail flash of a U.S. Air, Air Force, whatever. So it's, yeah, but it would be a huge part of the plane. It's It's a big piece. Suspicious timing, to say the least. Uh, but Dex, the Pentagon's top China official has arrived in Taiwan. So this is the first visit from a uh, top official, probably the highest ranking official from the Pentagon uh, that has gone there in, in quite some time. So in, in going specifically to Taiwan. Now, this is going against uh, what Xi would want to see happening. He doesn't think that anybody should be going there. They should be going through him, uh, through China, if they want to have access to Taiwan. Uh, that's his opinion of it. So um, this, uh, you know, there's last time this happened, you know, Nancy had gone there and then, you know, all heck sort of broke loose right after. And we had all these massive drills and stuff that they had to do. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they, if they treat this the same way, it's not a politician. It's uh, from the, you know, the uh, defense 
or directly from the Pentagon, so BOD. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they treat this, how they being uh, Xi responds, if they take this as a big threat or uh, if they, you know, just ignore it. I have a sneaking suspicion they're going to use this as a reason to go push harder against a Taiwan, which they've been doing daily. Yeah, so the whole the drills of them surrounding the island with all of their tankers and carriers and everything else, <clears throat> that could pick up again. We could see all sorts of um, all sorts of navy movement over there. But is this going to be the real thing? That's the thing. They've they've pointed out. Let's see here. They've pointed out that you know it's not going to happen until twenty twenty five. And then others before that said, oh, it's it's going to happen and guaranteed by 2027. I think that that would be purposely throwing people off thinking it's down the road and just to, you know, kick the can down the road until later. They, they're going to want the element of surprise. They already have ships surrounding the island. You would think if they were going to do it, they were going to do it now. When they're exercising and doing all of these drills, they would want the same military members and all of their soldiers that were actually involved in the drills. Otherwise, in a couple, four years from now, they're going to have to do all the drills and exercises again to have battle readiness. I mean, it just doesn't make sense when half of their soldiers might be, you know, moved on or out of the army by then. It doesn't make sense. And then Ukraine's priority to hold the line as global security leaders gather. It says senior politicians and military leaders from around the world met in Germany on Friday with the Ukrainian officials expected to address the security conference as they try to fend off the Russian missile strikes on the cities and mass assaults on the front lines, which are massive. By the way, look outside the United States. I don't know if Europe's having the same problem with this, but there is so much information available, not just from, you know, Russian uh, news sources. But you're talking about Indian news sources, uh, African news sources. Uh, I, w I would tell you in uh, uh, in uh, South Africa, their news sources are solid and they have both sides and they don't have this like back and forth thing. Uh, now, it depends on which one you go to because there's they've got their own political stuff going on. But as far as them covering other countries, they've been pretty good about it. Because if you look at all of these different countries, they match up. And then you look at Western media and Western media is purposely leaving out things that would absolutely terrify people. They're preparing Russia. Uh, they're telling their people like we're this is uh, this is going to be a war. They got directly involved. They are involved. We are fighting the U.S. right now. They're telling them that. I mean, that's what we're all, you know, it's not really a debate. We are directly uh, helping them strike targets inside of Russia. They can't even do anything without our data. So this is not this is not going well. There's got to be a back, uh, re, you know, uh, uh, under the carpet reason why they're doing this. Uh, are they trying to take out Russia? Are they trying to get us into World War III so they can uh, move along agendas that are just moving too slow? I mean, remember, it used to be Agenda 21. We're at 23 in it, and now things are starting to pick up. Uh, it's it's pretty nuts. Think about when war hits; it's it's going to change everything. Uh, they can put in all sorts of laws. They can change how we live. I mean, look at what happened with CV. They were able to literally line us up six feet apart and have us go through all sorts of hoops. Think about a world war involving almost every country in the world. They, they'll, they'll be able to quickly say, oh, this is for wartime. By the way, during wartime, they can snatch your land. They can snatch your, the water cup out of your hand and say, this is our water now. They can snatch your car. They can snatch everything. That's, that's something I, I don't think people are ready for, for sure. But it, it does say that uh, bolstered by tens of thousands of reservists, Russia is intensified ground attacks across southern and eastern UKR. They're saying in every other country that uh, Russia is bringing in the big stuff and that they are just tearing through things. So if they do tear through all of the UKR soldiers, who do you think is going to go in in their place? Or are we just going to, we just wasted all this money. They're going to take all of UKR 
maybe leave 20% of it to the, the place that they don't even want of uh, the people that they know they're not going to want to manage. It, it does not look good. If we win or we lose, we are not in a good position. Uh, and by we, I mean NATO and UKR, if they win, we're not in a good position. And if they lose, we're not in a good position. So they've been raining missiles like crazy, and they said that they were going to be out like three attacks ago and six attacks ago and nine attacks ago. But, of course, they're not. So, by the way, thank you, Renee Alera. I appreciate that. Thank you for the massive support of the channel. Thank you. Again, thank you for supporting Independent, Renee. Uh, again, I think that's the second time this week. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and then what I send is no air show. I get real-time info. Remember, it's not what you know, but who. 111 says, Be Real Beast. Be Real, um, th yeah, and thank you again. I really appreciate all of the info. And again, if people can send, if you have tips and things like that, please send it. Just realize some sometimes I can't get to them in time. Uh, it says, Get Ready for the Handover event, says Zusha Taka Katamoto Shift. I hope not. Uh, with the, I, I don't know if you mean like president, right? And then, uh, yeah, with the whole stream pipeline, they're talking about that. Before we move on, I do want to let you guys know, uh, make sure to go over and check out Energy. Uh, this is another affiliate that we actually believe in. We both use. Dex and I both have, uh, again, the Flex 1500. I have the Kodi X2s as well, and these things have are literally my new favorite. Again, I mean that. Like This has gotten us through so many scenarios uh, so far, as far as the Flex 1500 got me through three complete power outages for more than a day, and then the Kodi X2s we've been using for pretty much everything. Uh, but again, these are solar generators, so they can power by uh, solar panels, or they can be charged by the wall. Uh, this one is an all built in one, which you can actually dual link up to two units and double the capacity and of course double the output, which is awesome. You can power some really, really serious stuff with this uh, when you dual link it. And then uh, what's really new, and we talked about this before, is the all new Flex UPS Rapid Charger. So this video kind of shows a lot of that. But uh, one thing somebody, so somebody said, uh, made a comment about they ordered one and, and, uh, they have had to wait three or four months just to let you guys know we have made it very clear these are the most coveted out there and they're one of the most built uh well-built machines you can go there's available units out there right now you can go grab yourself a, a generator and you could probably get it for cheaper but one thing you have to understand is china does control huge swaths of the lithium so if you do get one and it's made by one of those manufacturers, uh, don't get mad at us when it has a technical issue or just totally craps out on you in the middle of an SHTF situation or even in the middle of a blackout. These, the reason why you get these is they're built like trucks. They're built from metal, not plastic. Uh, again, and then they are reliable. This, this I have no qualms. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever have an issue with somebody saying, oh, you know, it, it just was chintzy. It's not. It's literally made like a, a tank. So these things are absolutely amazing. Now they have a UPS attachment for the Flex. The Flex is only one of the only weaknesses was that it was an EPS, which means it switches over in like 30 milliseconds instead of under 10, which is considered for an uh, uninterrupted power supply. Now you can turn this into an uninterrupted power supply that doesn't affect the battery. You can plug things into it. And then when your power goes off, it will immediately switch over to the, to the solar generator. And it can be extended up to 96 batteries and it can increase its input from 400. So four panels up to 12 with the supercharger. It's it's unbelievable. This thing really is one of the most uh, modular systems. You can edit it how you want to. You can build them like Legos. You can keep adding on. There's other extendable ones, but you end up adding a huge chunky cord for each one you extend and uh, questionable building uh, quality on those. This thing, you know what you're going to get, but remember, lithium is being fought over right now. So you're going to have to wait and get on a list. When we do make the announcements that they do have them and they just got a batch of lithium, that's when you want to order them. So when they get those lithium announcements, we always try to tell you, 
Get yours right now because you won't have to wait or you will have very little weight. They get huge batches of lithium, which now all these companies are fighting over chunks of lithium and then they put them in the batteries and they build them uh, for your order. I mean, like these are being built at batch by batch. So if you want one of the best and you want it to last for, you can pass these down to your kids. That's why people are going with energy. Uh, if you remember how things used to be built, that's how these things are built now. Uh, that's why people are going for this. That's why, again, uh, other than the fact that they're modular and everything else, you'll get to save as well 10% on all of the units. Uh, you make sure to use the code Marfugal. You'll also be supporting us as well. So you get a discount. You get it for less than you normally would, and you're helping our channel, and you're getting one of the most badass generators on the market. So I, I really do believe the Flex is the flagship and one of the best bar none. And, uh, of course, uh, with that supercharger, you're able to charge it. Uh, it has a 1,500 water. I uh, uh, want to say it's 1,500 or 13, 15, 1,200 watts of AC. So you can charge it in like literally an hour, an hour and a half or something like that, which is nuts. If that's from the wall, of course. But, yeah, make sure to go check it out. There's new stuff. Uh, Dex, go ahead. I just wanted to update the ship time since that's a hot topic at the moment with you um, and, and everybody. X2s, uh, two days is what it says. They ship within two to three days. Uh, flexes are looking at mid to late March, which is not that far out. It's a month, like four weeks, four to six weeks. So that's the current status on their site. Yeah, so if you see comments saying otherwise, then it's maybe somebody who just doesn't like us or something. Or if there is a problem, you can always contact us and we can expedite any problems and see what's the deal and, and talk to them directly. But these, I I really think people, the people that already have them have already sent us thank you letters and they use them for everything from camping to their cabins. Now they've outfitted their RVs and vans. But yeah, the X2, uh, I would make sure to grab them if they're saying two days. So two to three day ship times is, is absolutely amazing. All right. And then uh, let's see here. Arrested German Intel officer was to leak HIMARS and Iris T locations in Ukraine to Moscow. So uh, apparently this Intel officer was about to stir some stuff up. It says the publication writes that last fall, the FSB tried to obtain data on the location of UK artillery and air defense through the employee of Germany's Federal Intelligence Service, named as Karsten L., who was later arrested. According to the investigation, the BND officer was supposed to provide the FSB with GPS data for the HIMARS rocket systems provided by Washington and the Iris T air defense system supplied by Berlin. It says people familiar with the case say it is unlikely that such data could have been leaked. It says Der Spiegel reports that the spy was offered a six-figure sum for providing information. So he could have been getting, you know, a hundred to nine hundred ninety-nine thousand uh, dollars for, you know, for this information. Uh, so he's like, screw the benefits package. I'll just go with uh, spying. Uh, but what is a trip about that is if that information would have got over to Russia, Russia would have taken out all of the stuff we sent over there. That would quickly waste all of our taxpayer dollars. <laughs> all of it would have been for nothing if they knocked it out almost overnight. Uh, but who knows? They, I'm sure they moved this stuff around a lot. But uh, yeah, so they're actively and it kind of shows what they're who knows what they're doing about the U.S. and what events that they're taking part in uh, with the U.S. And then, uh, Dex, people got my opinion over on the short shareable video over on Marfugal News. Uh, make sure to go check that out. But do you want to talk about Zelensky warned Belarus against entering the war? Lukashenko is a hot topic right now. Um, you know, he's got... Uh... The side of Vlad, uh, Putin, that is, and um, it, he's certainly helped along the way, but has yet to actually engage. And he came out and said, hey, I'm not going to engage unless I'm directly uh, we're directly hit. 
but to me, that's sort of, and I think you've said this too, so it's not a unique thought, but it's sort of, it's, it's like putting that, uh, uh, foreshadowing of what's to come. Like we just expect to see something happen to Belarus so that they get pulled in. Um, so of course, being that that's the hot topic right now, Zelensky is coming out saying, no, 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 he should not be engaging in this. Uh, even if he does engage, he doesn't even have the, the, the strength to even do anything, you know, basically bashing him like he should, like he would as uh, an adversary. Um, but I, to me, it just, it, it's definitely one of those things you look at and say, yeah, it's kind of painting the picture. Of, you know, we expect to see something happen in Moldova. We expect to see Belarus get involved. Um, it, it, you know, where does it go from there? Um, we don't know yet, but like the, every time we start to hear about these little things, uh, then we, it, it sort of paints that picture that that's the next step that's going to happen. And clearly since the beginning, since we saw the battle maps of Belarusian presidents sitting there with the map saying that they were going to go through Moldova and invade, and, and since they used Belarus prior for other uh, missions, it's been pretty simple. I mean, these guys are all politicians, regardless of what country they're in. And I think most people can just see right through their BS and go, of course you are. They put this stuff out there beforehand uh, so they can can warn uh, let's see. Turn that off real quick. Okay. By the way, I left I left that thing on for a couple nights in a row where it goes Dex James on the line, and then of course it says Adam, you know, on the line. Uh, but I I know that that people noticed that because uh, people on Twitter kept calling me Dex and kept calling him Marf. So sorry about that. I will try to make sure that those are accurate, especially if you're new here. If if you've been here a long time, then you already know. All right, but by the way, I'm Adam, and it's moved around. Oh, there we go. That's a perfect place for it, right there. So just so you guys know, I am Adam. And we'll just keep that there for the rest of the time. There we go. All right. Uh, thank your mods for keeping it peaceful in chat. They do a great job of also sharing all the appropriate links. And uh, of course, if we have Fugal family friends, we're going to be having calls again. Uh, another thing about just being independent and on our own, everything that we have to do, we have to do on our own. And, and again, we have a pretty complicated system for the calls, uh, but we did upgrade some things so it would make it better. And so we could have guests, uh, but it, it's definitely not uh, an easy thing. There's a few people that we have already contacted that we want to get on the show. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. And then we're adding uh, we're adding some really cool things. So it's exciting, but it's been a lot slower than we thought it was because there's been some downfalls. Looks like I'll have to add a new mixer to the list of things because the Roboto thing is still there. So, uh, but... We will be having guests, and I do want to put this out there before we have guests. I'm going to have people that not everybody likes because I'm going to have everybody on. I'm really sick of the community. Like, I have trolls that aren't even my trolls. They're trolls from other channels that I have said, oh, you know, check out this person. <laughs> and how it works is if somebody doesn't like that creator and then you say, hey, go check out his channel, then immediately you have the people that hate that person now hate you as well. Or you have creators that will not work with you if you have another creator on your show because they disagree on things. I'm sick of it. I've never been like that. I don't care if 10 people at the table have 10 different views and they are completely opposite. That's never, I've just never cared. And back in the day, you could talk about political views all day and it would never go to fisticuffs. It certainly wouldn't go to like, you know, de unfriending people you've known for 40 or 50 years because you found out who they voted for. That's where we are now. And that's manufactured. That's some fake at. Mm -mm, and I think it's it's BS. So if I have one creator on that, you know, half people say, oh, he's a chill or this or that, or half people say, oh, I, he's been my favorite for 10 years. It's like, I hope you guys know that we need to all get on the same page on this. And we're going to, you know, we want to get as many positive people here. This should be an area where you come after work. It should be an interesting podcast and interesting show. And you get to learn all this stuff. And 
uh, get introduced to different preppers, to different community members, to different, uh, you know, creators. That's what I want this to be so we can all uh, try to figure out what is going on. But again, we're not fully staffed. We don't have a staff of backup members. You know, if Tucker Carlson is sick or something, there's a multi-million dollar person to come in and take his place for that day, right? Uh, we don't have that, and we still stay pretty consistent at almost every time, five days a week. If we can't make a show or something, there's usually something seriously wrong, and we usually notify you through our official notifications uh, or for through Twitter. So make sure to follow me on Twitter through that. And then sometimes there's just uh, times where we go on super, super late. So I apologize about that. But again, I'm a normal guy like you guys. <clears throat> and that's why you watch independent because you want independent regular people like yourself instead of $12,000 suit woman or $12,000 suit man on, on uh, TV. And there it is again. I have to fix that. All right. Uh, nearly in Russia's entire army is in Ukraine suffering first world war levels of attrition. Uh, Dex, do you want to talk about this? And we don't know what, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but you could assume that there's some pretty tough conditions over there. And, uh, what they're claiming is that the, almost the entire Russian army is dealing with some hard situations here. Yeah, this is fascinating. I don't know where this came from. Uh, and, uh, you know, these statistics come from other than they say that they now estimated 97% of the Russian army, uh, the whole army is in UKR. That's what they're saying. Um, and that seems, uh, I don't know, that just seems a little off to me. It seems like um, that would be, you know, about 2 million strong if i remember uh you know they've been reports anywhere from one and a half to two million going into this uh and with all the conscription and all the people they've added i would think it would be closer to that number that's a lot and i just don't know that we actually see that kind of those kind of numbers there but that's what they're trying to tell us so yeah definitely throw a you know get the salt shaker out and start you know getting a good spoonful because you might need it here um uh, of course they do also say that, um, you know, UKR is also suffering heavy losses, too. So this then becomes a game of attrition, just like we talked about with uh, the, the, the shells, the, the munitions and things like that. Like who's going to run out first and who's going to deplete them? Obviously, UKR is not producing their own. They have to get them from NATO. They have to get them from the U.S. So uh, they've gone through all of their whatever stockpiles they may have had uh, before the conflict. And on the other hand, you know, uh, Vlad makes his own, uh, they, they can produce and they've got a big production facilities that are producing plenty of munitions and being able to keep up with their, their needs. So, you know, the same sort of, uh, it's kind of gross when you think about this, but it's the same kind of happens with troops. It's like who has the most number of troops and who can withstand the losses the longest, um, and that, that is one that, you know, we don't really get the reports of how many people, how many losses UKR is having. And if they do, they're, they're ten, they tend to be a little more, you know, they, they tend to, uh, paint the picture that's appropriate for them, which is, you know, we've, we're losing some and we need help, but we're not losing too much that it looks like we're losing this whole thing because you guys are helping us and keep sending money. Cause if you send money, we'll keep winning and you don't want to send money to somebody that's not a winner. Uh, you don't want to fund losers, so we have to paint that picture that we're winning. Uh, but we're not only, we're only winning because you give us money and we need more of it. Yeah. So, you know, put that whole uh, paint that whole picture when when you're thinking about uh, this type of message and, and understand that you know who the source is, where it's coming from, what position they're taking, and uh, you know. I don't, I cannot fathom that the entire army is of <laughs> Vlad is sitting in UKR because what are they doing with the rest of their country? Are they protecting themselves? Well, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks are saying that Wallace is also a liar, uh, but I, I'm, I kind of believe that this is their, the, this is their real run in. And if they do mow down the UKR, they're saying heavy losses, but maybe that's because they're also taking you know, tons of the UK are out. We don't have accurate information. I mean, in the beginning of this thing, they wouldn't even let press uh, in bed with the the soldiers. Like, they didn't want us to see something. 
But with this, you've got the trained guys, the ultimate tanks. You got the the good weapons. You got jets going in. This is this is the real deal. All up to now, they were throwing their garbage and seeing how much they could do without you know expending any of their good stuff. That's why, if you hypothetically think that this is about to kick off, then you would think that China is also going to take Taiwan at this point. The thing is, is there's a lot, a lot of us, including myself, that believe. All of these uh, war games and scenarios, they all paint the only way China and Russia would win is if we, the U.S. and NATO, are fighting both at the same time. If you look at ha half of the militaries in NATO, they have gone down over the last few years. I don't know if they were all infiltrated and over the years their you know, individual politicians were saying, ah, let's cut the military and let's put more money into making bike lanes. I don't know what was going on. But now, uh, t you know, top tier militaries are now not even, you know, third tier militaries. We have covered that. Like they, they've re-established uh, that all of these militaries are much lower on the totem pole now. So then when you basically have the U.S. versus Russia and China and and possibly India, India has been drilling with Russia. Uh, you have India even going alongside with their, you know, adversary, China. They've been drilling together. They ended up at the same drills together. That's scary. Like a third wheel date kind of thing. Like, I don't like your friend, but whatever. And then you have, of course, Iran, you have possibly Cuba, you have all of these other outliers in North, uh, North Korea, and now South Africa. I mean, this look, this is like giving Red Dawn vibes all over the place. Uh, only China is not going to be on our side. Uh, which in the original, China was actually our ally. I, I forgot that. I just watched the 84 version again, which... You got to go back and watch the older flicks. The older movies are just so much better. Um, less Michael Bay type explosions and more, you know, actual story and dialogue. But as far as this goes, if their whole military is in there, I would say they're getting ready for a real war. Uh, the 101st Division's digging trenches in Romania. Why do you think they're digging trenches? Trenches or for when it actually kicks off. And if it does go down with the entire world, which I believe it, I believe it's only a matter of time, then people need to be ready for things to change very quickly. Uh, people are not not prepared for these things at all. And then China mocks Biden administration for being blind to the toxic mushroom cloud over Ohio while obsessing over balloons. See, I, I don't know, though. Um, the, the more you look into what they will do during World War III, I don't think the balloons are a nothing, but the balloons that they've been talking about this last week are. But there might be, there was some more um, perspective into that from military members in the Fugel fam. They said since 2019, uh, that uh, or sorry, 2017, and uh, early in 2018, they had some sort of military meeting about the balloons and they actually involved drones so that the balloons could actually deliver packages of drones that would then release and you could release a thousand small drones with explosives on it. This is something I haven't seen covered anywhere. It's kind of like the thing I talked about before with the bat bombs. Bat bombs was a World War I thing where they would drop a actual cage full of a thousand bats, live bats. They would strap um, uh, an incendiary on the bat. And then what they would do is they would do a small explosion that would uh, light the bats on fire. And then the bats naturally go to a wood area. They will go right into, say, an attic or a crawl space or a wood area like a, a corner of a building. And they'll try to hide there. Well, if they're on fire, they're going to light that building on fire. This was a real test. If you look up bat bombs, it was a real thing. Obviously, it's inhumane and whatever else. But that's similar kind of thinking with these balloon drone bombs. And they would drop it. All of these autonomous swarms would go to uh, individualized targets, which were set beforehand. 
They could be set in China. And here's the thing. They can travel over the whole way. It's a, it's a way that they can actually carry up to 2,000 pounds with one of those bigger balloons or 1,000 pounds with a half size balloon, not be detected, and be able to take a ton of these drones. They're very light. Uh, they're very powerful. And each one of those drones can actually be attached with the, the explosives. So I thought this was pretty interesting, and they were worried about this. So I don't know about what's orchestrated right now, but it is something that it is something that uh, not only ex well, it of course exists, but it is something that that Chinese base that they've been showing. This is something that they have been worried about, and they are they are uh, worried because of how they could get a whole lot here in a short amount of time. And we might not detect it until last second, or even if we do detect it, uh, they now have these these uh, sensor, this, some sort of radiation that can actually undo uh, their signature or something. So there's more to these balloons than people even think. I have not seen this covered anywhere besides, you know, just talking about the general stuff. Uh, but if they deliver drones, those drones release say they have data on every single American through some sort of infiltration that they've been doing, TikTok, DJI, whatever it may be, or even, you know, addresses to every single person who owns a bang bang. Each one of those drones goes to each house and goes boom, 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 boom. After a EMP or something, then you've just taken care of a lot of the problem to invading the USA. I know that's, this is what this is what uh, they play out in these war games, and I think I think if Russia really is all the way there, then we've got some problems. Uh, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs on Friday ridiculed the administration for focusing its energies on harmless objects in U.S. airspace, but pe uh, playing down the giant chemical fire in Ohio. Basically, there he's he's pointing out what uh, also Russia is pointing out as well. He's pointing out what independent media and everybody else is too. Yeah, this was not covered for the first week at all. And they, a lot of folks believe that they covered it up. Uh, there is definitely stuff that is down the Ohio River. And regular people are going down there scraping it. And these chemicals are popping up, even throwing rocks in the water. And it's bubbling like some sort of uh, toxic ooze out of Toxic Avenger. Uh, as far as this goes, though, that I mean, they're saying, "Hey, you're you're talking about this when you're about that kind of kind of ganda ish." Uh, Dex, do you have a comment on the uh, China talking about Ohio? Eh, they just, you know, they're they're seizing the opportunity. They they look at what everyone else is uh, is is up in arms over, and if they can throw some shade at the administration coming right out of this that's a it's an opportunity for them and they certainly are it is most definitely and speaking of china so the picture on your screen is the spratly islands uh so another thing that we're hearing from the military members that are following flight radars and again you guys can all participate in this if you are somebody who is just a amateur uh flight radar watcher let us know if you see strange things because you can't watch the entire thing all at once by yourself. But if we have a bunch of people watching it, we can catch little weird things. Uh, that's what the community already does. People are catching things all the time that are very suspicious, very, very weird. Uh, but people are seeing all sorts of different weird things disappearing in the ocean, going off radar uh, midway through just all sorts of odd events happening. I want to point out that military member out of New Jersey was telling me about the Spratly Islands and why these are such a threat. So on screen, this is the, this is one of the many Spratly Islands. I've talked about these a lot. They created them from essentially little kind of, there was a couple places where the, uh, the dirt or the, the land was up. There was a couple bumps. But what they did is they took a special boat and they actually scooped dirt off of the bottom of the ocean and they, they basically piled it up until it was a humongous pile and then they would flatten it out. They would turn it into an island. Well, then, as I covered this from the beginning of my channel, these didn't exist. 
and we covered it. And as it, we were, it was conspiracy. It was considered conspiracy that these were going to be military forward operating bases. They were saying that this was going to be an environmental thing where they were going to be drilling for a certain resource or something like that. By now, everybody knows these are forward operating bases. These are bases. These are airfields. As you can see it right there, clearly, you have not only uh, bases, but now, uh, now people are saying that there is actual manufacturing uh, and ammunition depots there that can actually manufacture basic ammo. Uh, they have anti-air. They have uh, inlets for a lot of their Navy. And they have docks. They have everything. And this is just one of the many islands they have made. They are loading these things up. And that is something that is incredibly concerning when you are talking about the timing of everything else that's going on from China uh, drilling down in South Africa with South Africa and Russia uh, with the lasers that were scanning Hawaii, which they now say were confirmed from some sort of Chinese satellite. And we're talking about lasers that they think were scanning areas of of this area where there's you know major military bases and if the spratly islands truly are being loaded up and uh, in a, un, at an unprecedented level like constant uh you know 24 7 uh ships going back and forth loading them up with supplies that is something you should be paying attention to i believe these islands were not only uh, made for military, which they are, there's, I don't think there's a doubt about that. Uh, I believe these were made specifically for World War III. It's not exactly a midpoint because it's, it's, not, it, it's not a straight line from the China to the U.S., but one of our strengths was that we were so far away, and back in the day, uh, they had issues of actual logistics getting from China to here, and by the time they would get here, they would all be empty fuel. You know, it would be hard to actually get here. They could do it, but it was it was a big thing. As far as having these islands, this uh, takes a lot of the uh, the pressure off of as far as they can resupply a whole, whole lot of different things they have now, including technologies and floating technologies and amphibious vehicles that can tug along uh, with electric motors and take a lot of this stuff uh, you know, over alongside and silently that won't be alerting anybody. So I would pay attention just, uh, just passing on again, what, uh, I've been hearing from some of the military community members here. Uh, if you can in any way confirm or deny this, let me know. Cause it looks like right now they are constantly loading the Spratly islands with gear and I'm talking like unprecedented levels of gear going to the Spratly Islands right now. And I don't see any of the mainstream media talking about it. I see them talking about balloons. So if you have info on this, please let me know. Adam at MarfugalNews.com. And you can also uh, copy Dex at MarfugalNews.com on that as well if you'd like. All right. And then... Before we move on, just a quick reminder, marfuglenews.com slash prep. The deal's changed, but it's even, I, I think it's actually even cooler now. Uh, Dex, can you tell them what now they're doing? They're actually doing, you get a bunch of free gear with the three-month supply through marfuglenews.com slash prep. That's right. If you buy three months of food, uh, which is at a really great price compared to a lot of the other this is very economical foods in buckets, stored, ready, 25-year shelf life, ready to go, uh, it comes with $200 in free gear. This is everything from additional food to water filtration uh, to cooking tools, canned heat, which is uh, cooking fuel, uh, emergency blankets, et cetera, a whole, uh, like an entire kit of, of things that you could use, uh, in, in addition to just getting food. So you actually get a lot more, uh, than just food, which food is obviously very important to everybody. So that's over on Marfugal news, 
dot com slash prep. Not only can you get food, but you can also find things like the Alexa Pure water filtration, iodine tablets, any other prepping gear you're looking for. They got a whole uh, slew of things. If you can't figure that out at the top, just click on the uh, My Patriot Supply logo. It'll take you to the rest of the store. But go through our link, morefuglenews.com slash prep. You can get those deals that they offer uh, just for the Fugal fam. And uh, there is no code, so don't get confused. Use the link, morefuglenews.com prep slash prep. If you can't, if you don't remember it, just open up the description. It's down below. And you can get $200 worth of free gear, all sorts of cool stuff. Basically, all survival gear, survival gear that like a go bag type of uh, thing that's already put together. So not only are you getting food, you're getting some gadgets, you're getting some other things as well. So, all right. And then it helps support our channel and helps us grow and reinforce the growth of our channel and, of course, uh, our family. So thank you. Uh, White House says it may never be able to identify the three objects shot down after China's, uh, China's surveillance craft. Basically, they're telling us, oh, we're just not going to talk about it anymore and and uh, we're just going to leave you hanging. Uh, many of us believe that this whole thing with all of the three other objects were a bunch of BS. Maybe they turned up the sensitivity of their sensors and they were shooting down hobbyist balloons who knows maybe they were taken down uh you know the movie ups uh got old guy's house we don't know uh, but they say that they're basically never going to be able to identify what they took down how do you physically shoot a, a six hundred thousand dollar missile at something and not know what the hell it is i added echo for uh the exaggeration effect but I think it makes sense. $600,000 per heat-seeking missile. And you don't know what you shot down. That seems a little irresponsible. Or they're just completely blowing smoke up our rear ends. What is your opinion? Let me know in the chat below. And if you're watching the replay, please let me know in the comments. Uh, beer juice, beer juice. Thank you for the ninja guinea. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, beer juice. I appreciate all of the folks over on D Live. Thank you guys. And then Dark Brain, thank you for being there. Beer juice, thank you also for gifting out a badge, a Marfia badge. And then uh, beer juice also gifted one to Starburst. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Uh, Lori Oder three nine zero six says thanks on a super thanks. Uh, which is uh, done on the replay. Thank you. And then uh, Main Watcher 5583 did a super thanks on the last show. Says, I'm a replay warrior. It's hard to catch the lives, but I always make the replay. Thank you for changing my life and being ready. God bless. Hey, Main Watcher, thank you for saying that. And we really do appreciate getting those messages. Uh, and then Jacob Winter, don't get to catch the live shows much due to new work schedule, but catch up every morning. <coughs> Thank you, Adam and Dex, for the amazing work. Blessing and the best wishes to the mods and the Fugal fam. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's seriously very, very nice. Uh, thank you, all the replay watchers that are watching right now. And Zakamoto Tomato Sushi Sushi Saka Saka. Zushi, Zush, Zash, Zashowitz. Uh, I'll, I, man, that was bad. Zushi Kata Tomoto Shift. I, your name is is really. I'm struggling. I'll just call you, call you Tom, Tomato. Thank you. Trinity, red or blue pill, hi-ho, Kermit the Frog. Oh, did a video. It says, I covered this in my live last night and a few years ago. Welcome to share it. Love to all. Trinity, if you want to drop the link for that video in the chat, please do. And then Miss Daisy, thank you so much for your support. Stephen McMahon says, there is at least one enemy army in USA, and our own government is feeding and housing them. You guys can guess which one that is. And then X2.2 Flare today, Craig Alicious. Well, um, you know, wages told us that we were most likely going to get something like that with all of those sunspots and that one spot sunspot that basically came direct uh, pointing at us, said it was going to be pointing at us by today. 
And then uh, Daily Stoic 641 and Bible Talk 777. Matthew 10, 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Bible Talk 777, thank you and amen to that. Uh, Celtic Warrior, I said last night that I would donate $100 if my computer was broken till I jumped out and jumped back in. Then it showed 1600 so here you go with much love. Then it showed 1.6. Well, thank you. Uh, Celtic Warrior, I appreciate that, and thank you for supporting live. You didn't have to do that, but I guess uh, thank you for for doing that. Uh, re we really do appreciate it. And then get ready for the handover event. Zushi. Zushi tomato. That's what I'll say. So uh, what do you guys think about all of the stories tonight? Please let us know. And then also thank you for the feedback on the short shareable videos. I've been putting out a video every single day. Uh, I believe Saturday, last Saturday was the only day I missed. If you guys appreciate those, let me know in the comments down below. I really do appreciate you guys uh, giving me feedback on that on news. And then if you are not subscribed to that, please go over to Marfugal News, our sister channel, and hit that. And then not many people actually do the whole like thing, but it does help. And it's something you can do for free and it helps us. And same with comments. It helps us uh, get recommended to new people. That data tells the computer to, to bring this to other people. So thank you. Uh, Dex, do you want to go over the web only? There's a lot of crazy stuff right now. Uh, there certainly is. So head over to morefuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show or open up that description on YouTube or Rumble and click on the show notes link. It'll take you right here, this web page where all the news articles we just covered and we just talked about and offered our opinions on is available. And then right after that, you get this yellow bar. It says overflow. It's the rest of the story, everything else we couldn't get to in the show, some additional content and even some subjects that we just don't typically talk about because it just kind of get everybody all riled up. So uh, if you're interested, go take a look. Lots going on. Uh, we definitely have uh, some coverage, uh, continuing coverage around what's happening with uh, the Wagner group um, and specifically their what kind of horrible thing they're doing with videos to try to plea to, to plea for more uh, ammunition um there's additional updates around nk um and what they're doing uh you the um balloon saga continues but there's really not much more i'm actually hoping that that last article we just talked about signals the end of the um <laughs> the, this whole balloon mess and we can just the distraction is now officially over because they've told us they're not going to be able to figure it out i hope that's the end of it but we'll see uh so you know they they have fully recovered everything so it's just a matter of time uh as they investigate that um some stuff going on in Oregon that's there. There's definitely the political stuff that's always covered in here. Um, of course, uh, you, if you don't get, if you can't get enough, I'm sure there's plenty out there, but we cover all sides of the spectrum here. Of course, T man is front and center because of what's been going on in Georgia. Um, genetically modified trees are now being planted in our forests. What do you think about that? I think that probably will bother a lot of people to think about, um, especially when we think about what, uh, what else happens with genetically modified stuff? Um, and then uh, in LA, they've been telling people to stop wearing flashy jewelry. Don't leave your phone in your car. Don't leave anything of any value. Now they're literally saying, don't leave a water bottle in your car. Crime is so bad. They're saying it's your fault for, uh, for making it happen because of all the good stuff you have that you show off and people want to take from you. So <laughs> lots of crazy stories out there like that and many more it's all on marfugalnews.com if you click on the thumbnail for the show it'll take you right here if you missed yesterday's click on yesterday's thumbnail you'll see it as well um and again if you're on youtube and rumble it's even easier just open up that show notes link in the description you don't even have to leave the app it's right there you can read it all click through and then be done with it thank you dax and thank you for your service tonight i appreciate you much love great job brother and thank you, everybody else that joined us tonight. Make sure to share this out to all of your favorite social media platforms. And, of course, uh, thank you to Celtic Warrior. I uh, appreciate your support tonight. And to everybody else that popped in again, thank you. It is now time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. 
It's a show troll. Thank you so much for your support tonight. I appreciate you. For that, we make a new song. I was on a higher 